People are watching me. They're watching me all the time. They're watching me even when they're pretending not to watch me. They're watching me to see how well I do this thing called human. Every dream I ever had came true. The person I never thought I was, or could be, I am. I come in contact with a variety of people during the course of a week. Conversation with a museum guard. Hey, champ, how you doing? Hey, have you seen the museum before? How? Huh? Have you seen the exhibit? Oh, no, don't get up. <laughs> Have you been outside yet? You can't break anything outside. <laughs> no, 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 don't get up. Ah. Have you seen the first floor, the I second am. floor? Huh? Hey, what are you doing with these handcuffs, huh? Got a pair just like them. No, don't get up. Hey, you come back and you ask for me. <sighs> Conversation with a lady in the grocery store. Um, oh, can I help you? I I'd be glad to help you. Or should I mind my own business? Okay. Well, I'll mind my own business then. <laughs> Conversation with a guy in the laundromat. Oh, still damp. Oh, well. Hi. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Not too close now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you come here a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh. I, I always wait till I run out of clean clothes yeah, before I uh, come here to do my laundry. Yeah. Uh, well, you, uh, well, you, you get any trouble lately? Yeah, me neither. You know, actually, life's been pretty quiet for me, too. Yeah, just doing my laundry. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey! Do you want some help? Of course you do. Here we go, big guy. I got you. Mm. I got you. Here we go. Mm. Wait a second. I'm going to help you whether you like it or not.
Okay. What do you like, one cup or two? One. I think you need two. <laughs> there you go. We're going to work this one out, me and you. We're going to work it out together, huh? Oh, a little attitude, huh? I like that. So, um, what's your name? <laughs> well, Herbert, <laughs> I only have two pairs of pants, but a dime for five minutes in the laundry. Let me tell you, that's a... Well, I about you, huh? Yeah, right. Uh, well, um, uh, see you in a month or two. Conversation with a guy jogging in the park. Whoa! Ah! Sorry! <laughs> I was watching you eat that brownie. Is this yours? You seem to take such time and care with it. Like, like it was a dance or making love or something. Oh, sorry. These don't even work. What's your name? Mine's Fred. Good brownie. You know, I didn't know people like you existed. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, where do you come from? Do you live around here? Yeah, I do. Well, you live alone? Uh-huh. Well, who takes care of you? You got, you got someone coming and taking care of you? Uh-huh. You do. Well, well, where's your mother? Do you have a mother? For some reason, I come in contact with more people during the course of a week than anyone I know. Like the businessman who helped me get my wheelchair up ooh, the escalator. The lady in the train station who told everybody to get out of my way. Out of his way! Get out of his way! Out of his way, young lady! He what? needs to catch a train! Oh, the taxi driver who couldn't quite understand where I wanted to go. All right, so what street did you want to turn on? See, now that's what I'm talking about. I can't understand you. Can you work with me? Oh, come on. Stick up. Hey, don't pull me your foot. I'm going to drive this thing. Or the man who sat next to me on that train and tried to ignore me. Fred Astaire. And although he can't dance, he can dance. And he does dance. And our eyes are glued to him, and he is beautiful. It's beyond any shadow of a doubt that he is a star. And watching him, we are all stars.
I believe I have a voice. Words, feelings, observations, perceptions. Thoughts that can move the world. I am a storm, a cyclone of ideas, thunder and lightning. A warm summer breeze, a gentle spring rain. Some people, when they look at me, they see only a winter or an autumn. Too few of them know how to read a storm. I think we should all be taught what to look for before a storm. I think if we watched the birds, we'd know. Our eyes would see that the brown or black color of caterpillars signals a mild or harsh winter, or that a moon's halo heralds of fresh snow. Or that if we could truly look within ourselves, we'd know all of this and more. It's the content of our lives that's important. Can openers, shoe goo, bicycle inner tubes, Scotch tape dispensers, all of it is important. Some people hide from storms. They close their shutters, doors, and blinds. They steep themselves in their own darkness and rob themselves of the tumultuous journey and its exhilaration. But some people, when they see my twisted frame, my dystonic disarray, they embrace the storm, and their eyes light up, and they rush to hug me as a long-lost brother, as if embracing a storm was food for their souls. I can teach you to read a storm. Dear National Institute of Mental Health, thank you in advance for awarding me the five-year, $500,000 grant to study moi. I'm sure this is money well spent. Sincerely, Neil Marcus. Oh, P.S. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, of course. I knew I had seen this before. Neil, you are a living brush. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you, you old goat. You know, the Chinese calligraphers, they study years to move just like you do. Now, their goal is to hold the brush as still as a rock in one hand, and then move it with the entire body. 
When I saw you stand and leap, no. Fly! I knew I'd seen it before. My God, you are a living brush. Your hand is your entire heart and soul. The way you move is directly from you. You is total expression. You can't hide it. My God, man! I love it! <laughs> Welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? Hello? Hello? Hi? Are you all right? Yeah. Oh. Did, did you just order? Yeah, I did. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, don't tell anybody I said that. Um, can we take it again, please? All right. <laughs> all right? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Uh huh. You'd like a cheeseburger? He wants a cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, uh huh. Uh, uh huh. Come on. Uh, We're on a roll. Uh, French fries? No. <laughs> Coke? No. Apple pie? No. Uh, onion rings? Yeah! Give us a pile of onion rings on the house! <laughs> That's it, right? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> and? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, milk. And a vanilla milkshake. <laughs> I got it! Is that it, sir? <laughs> yeah. Right. At Burger <laughs> King. <laughs> Tonight's lecture is on spasticity. Spasticity in movie theaters is a well-known phenomenon. It comes about as a result of people's close proximity to one another. The uh, disabled person, the specimen, has arrived. <laughs> the disabled person, who is already a little spastic to begin with, feels that when he enters into the theater, everybody is watching him. Well. This causes him to become tense. Oh, and his legs light up. <laughs> Naturally, 
he is concerned about blocking people's view of the screen or distracting them with his heavy breathing. Heavy breathing. <laughs> oh, very good. And or violent motions. <coughs> fabulous, fabulous. So, while the actors on the screen are either hitting each other, yes, or making love. Oh, that's making love. Oh, Scientifically, gosh. I find that very interesting. <laughs> you know, don't you find that? each other. Good. Oh no, stop that. That's backwards. Ah. The um the disabled person is trying to maintain his overall sense of physical tension. Let me say that categorically science is looking into this. Yes, I understand. Good Benjamin, very good. Well thank you and good evening. Oh Here's a little tricky treat for you. Ah! 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 stars and everybody looks up at them in awe. There are disabled people such as myself. And movie stars look at me in awe. And I wonder, am I a movie star? And why do movie stars like to do charities for disabled kids? Is it because disabled people actually are living a very dramatic life? After all, society isn't organized to make our lives any easier. But at the same time, disabled people have strong human emotions. Why, we are the living incarnations of brave acts. And our presence stirs everybody and everything. What a script! <laughs> oh. What do people think? Hey, nice wheelchair. <laughs> if you're joking about being disabled, you better quit it. <gasps> Wait here. I'll call an ambulance. I'll call for help. I might be like him someday. <gasps> Come here. Look, Mommy. No, 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 don't point. That will hurt his feelings. Stop it. Hey, spare some change for the Berkeley Free Clinic, dude. I was just wondering, Neil, uh, well, if I could be of any assistance. <gasps> May the demons of disability be dislodged. <laughs> Woo! Be hailed. <laughs> oh, brother. I'm not going to pity you or feel sorry for you. That's what you want, huh? Forget it. Get up and walk. You can do it. You're just a little lazy, that's all. You're stiff, that's all. Get up. We can make a beautiful love story together. Ooh. What's wrong with your foot? Children ask this a lot. I was wondering, Neil. How it feels to be, oh, I don't know, handicapped. Oh, uh, which word do you prefer? Um, disabled? No. Physically different? No. Crippled? Shit, of course not. Um, <laughs> special?
You're a what? Hmm. You're a person. Oh. She was born and grew up in a rainforest in Puerto Rico, where it will rain and plants will sprout overnight, where one plant will fall and die, and 12 new ones will sprout in its place. She was in a car accident, and her brain was injured. She was brain damaged. She forgets things. Well, she knows she forgets. Her brain is telling her she is healing. The world tells her that she's crazy. She is a poet. And when she writes, she feels connected to the entire universe. She has found new ways to write because her brain doesn't work in the old ways. She has found new places to store thoughts and concepts. At one point, she thought she was going to lose it. She changed. She changed her mind. She is alive today because she changed her mind. I have always maintained that disability is a never-ending quest to achieve perfection. You'll read about it at least once a day in the paper, or see it as a human interest story on TV. But they don't quite have the right idea. Disability is not a brave struggle, or courage in the face of adversity. Disability is an art. It's an ingenious way to live. Well, who would ever think of living that way if they weren't already disabled? 
Answer? No. Tonight. I have always wanted to see you do an ad with a wheelchair person doing something overly strenuous with some of your rugged luggage. The ads I have seen have been very creative and also very funny. People tend to fear that if you bring disability into public view, you're making fun of the people who have the disability in a rude sort of way. I don't think this is the case. Please consider using disabled people in your ads. Sincerely, Neil Marcus. <laughs> Dear Berkeley Farms, I'm using one of your baskets on the back of my wheelchair. These milk crates are the best. Without this milk crate, it would be very difficult to do all the things I do. I shop with it, put books in it, groceries, tools. I've tried many different kinds of carry-alls, but these milk crates are the best. Would you please consider waving the fine and jail sentence? <laughs> Apologetically, Neil Marcus. <laughs> Dear AT&T, your ad campaign to reach out and touch someone has been very inspiring to me as a disabled person. The best thing about it is it's not even a disabled theme. It's a human theme. And again in your ad, showing a man using sign language to tell about low weekend rates very cleverly includes disabled people, yet is of interest to all. I congratulate you. Sincerely, Neil Marcus. Reach out, reach out, and touch someone. Recently, a friend and I went to the emergency ward at Highland Hospital. It's in a really rough neighborhood. I waited in the ER lobby lounge while my friend went to see the doctor. A man approached me. Um, can I borrow your wheelchair to bring my mother in from the parking lot? Okay. I never saw that wheelchair again. Help! Don't yell, this is a hospital. You can't go to the No, be quiet. What are you doing? Doctor! Help. Doctor! Look oh at my him. god! I think he's on drugs! Oh, I thought he Can was we get some help here? Some help! Some help. Oh my help. god! I got him! Help. I got him! Help. I'm moving. Go. Oh. My knee. Chair. 
Someone stole your wheelchair. Yes. Uh-oh. Oh. We understand. You, you articulate well. Oh, <laughs> Help him, nurse. Uh, wait, doctor. Help him. This is just my first day. <laughs> <laughs> I scared you. Yeah. Oh, um, here, you may use the hospital's wheelchair. We'll, we'll lend this to you. Oh, thank you, doctor. Uh, let me help you out. Mm. I, Neil Marcus, do hereby promise to return my loaned wheelchair back to Highland Hospital. From where the staff and security section let me borrow it to replace my wheelchair, which was stolen from me, while I was sitting in the ER lobby lounge waiting for a friend to be treated. It is to be understood that upon my replacing my loss with a new wheelchair, I will return the borrowed chair to Highland Hospital. Signed, Neil Marcus. Witness number one, witness number two, witness number three. I'd like to have a garden and keep worms on my balcony. A drip system for watering. A bamboo patch and a succulent garden of creeping. Neil? <laughs> Whatever. Avocado pits that would sprout and grow into trees. A row of wheat, a row of rye, and a row of alfalfa. A snail den that I could feed leftovers to. And maybe, maybe, potato crop. We interrupt this show for a live press conference with Mr. Neil Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Neil Marcus. Mr. Marcus, Bill Daly from the Chicago Tribune, can you understand everything I am saying? Yes. yes, why are you speaking so slowly? Does your mind process my words as fast as I am saying them? <laughs> Faster, Bill. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Marcus, Mr. Marcus, read a hockey tent from loving times. Hello, Bill. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> um, in your article entitled Zen and the Art of Wheelchair Repair, uh -huh. uh, you make a comparison between sailboats and theatrical productions. I don't get it. Uh, sailing boats and theatrical productions, how are they related? Okay, right. Well, if it's too heavy, it sinks. And if it's too light, it blows over. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, Vince Gardenia from the Florida Enquirer. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, Neil. Neil, my paper ran a story on you two days ago mm -hmm. about a young lady who was seen leaving your apartment through the back door mm -hmm. in the wee hours mm -hmm. of the morning. Do you wish to comment, Mr. Marcus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
She only wants me for my body. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, Bob Daniels from the Kentucky Racer. Neil, we notice that you're using a voice interpreter. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But are there any words that you can say clearly? <laughs> Only two, but I seldom get a chance to use them. Garbanzo beans. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. You're, Marcus. Yours will be the last question. Bob yes. Vlogs from the News Press. Don't you feel you're using disability as a crutch? <laughs> <laughs> you don't act like a normal disabled person, like the ones I'm used to seeing. I mean, you, you dance in public, you bring attention to yourself in very unusual ways, and you handcuff yourself to strangers. <laughs> so what is your view on the relationship between the individual, such as yourself, and society? <laughs> Call me Bob. Okay. Bob. <laughs> uh huh. Society does not require you to conform. It only requires that you look like you're conforming. Actually, you're free to do anything you want. Thank you very much. We've got to catch a train. Bye-bye. <laughs>
You want me to write that down? Uh-huh. All right. Can you let go? There we go. Italian Chateaubriand. Oh, my good man, would you happen to have a house dressing? That sounds fine. Perfect. That down. Beautiful. Thank you. I think this is going to be fun. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like he uses it, honey. Yeah. You know, how about some water? That would great be great idea. Yeah. Great idea. Uh, sir, we would love a little water over here when you have a minute. <laughs> you want me to go get the water? But what is it? He can. I bet he's not even Italian. <laughs> My goodness, the Italian Chateaubriand. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> Pardon me. Here. Excuse me. I think he's got it in for me, honey. Oh. Look at this, though. Isn't that My. great? It's a beautiful well, chateau. It looks and it smells delicious, honey. Yeah, it really does. Well, enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hey, what is so elegant about this? I had to get the menus and the water. You put the plates on the table. Elegant schmelligant. Listen, honey, he couldn't do it. Uh, could you? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and you could. Well, yes, I well, could. Well, don't have... you think it's elegant that all three of us were working together to prepare this beautiful meal? Elegant. Come on, Thanks. honey, let's see. Thanks. <laughs> mm. Mm, that's delicious. Mm. See, I can't wait to see what's on the dessert tray. Wow. Mm. <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> I believe in God. I have nothing to say to him if it is a him. I don't want to say that there is a power greater than my power. My life represents a continual striving to be powerful. I don't believe in sin. I don't want to give up any control or responsibility. I want to believe in reality, nothing more than reality. It's all I hope for. Reality is enough. I resent the possibility of religion healing me. I want to work with what is real to me. I believe in people. I believe in nature. I believe in life. God might be life. I might be God. Hey, go on over and say hi to her. Go on. <coughs> yes, you can. Just roll on over and say hi. Oh, she's looking at you. I think she likes you. Just say hi to her. Hmm. Yes, you can. You go. Me? Uh, I'm not even here. I'm only your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Fear is what keeps people down. I see that clearly every day. How you put people together, say on a bus, and they don't want to smile or make friends or organize. They've been installed with fear at every level. Why, just to say hi to another person, 
They'd have to go through levels of sexism, racism, adultism, classism, homophobia, the fear of being thought too forward, and the fear of being thought too shy. Hi. Hi. I'm okay. Mm. How are you? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm. Where are you from? Where am I from? Mm -hmm. I'm from San Francisco. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I moved here 10 years ago. I was young back then. Well, I had a group of friends in San Francisco. They were really driving me crazy, and, and I had to get away. Uh, and I moved here. I know how they could be. Sorry. <laughs> Idea. What do you say? Maybe, maybe we could go see a movie together sometime. Or maybe you could come over to my house for some dinner. <laughs> Great. I could cook for you. You would cook for me? Yeah. What would you cook for me? rest on the earth and we'll look up at the skies. Crickets will sing to us. We'll drink cool water. We'll listen to the silence. We'll wait in the dark. We'll talk to the moon and we'll rise with the sun. We'll get warm with each other. I'm lying in bed with my girlfriend, happily awaiting the brand new day. Thoughts wander and touch is warm. I wanted you here beside me because I was lonely. But now that you're here, it feels like my right arm has been holding on to the edge of a cliff all day long and into the night. Most people go to bed to relax, but for me, going to bed is the nighttime Olympics. Oh. I see you lying next to me and I, I envy your peace. So we spend the night together. And we lie in love and warmth. But a spasm comes. So I sit on it. Or I try to hide it. But it makes me so mad. I can't yell for help. I want to be alone. I don't know what to do. If I kept you up with me, all night long, would you stay? If I screamed, would you stay? Sometimes I wish that you would take responsibility for my body. Sometimes I wish you would 
jump on me or sit on me, stretch me, or just hold me. Am I worth it? Do I deserve love and attention? Yes. I am a lover. I love to give love, and I love to be loved. The sun begins to stream through the open window. Oh, my hip joint crunches. My right arm goes into spasm. My girlfriend, who I've been holding close, receives my elbow into her spine. Ow! Oh, darling, I think you just put my rib. Oh, man. Huh. Back into place. I have trouble with tight clothes. Mm. Then one day I found the answer. Rainbow suspenders. I saw them in a store and they looked good. Now I can buy pants that are as big and baggy as I please and they'll always fit. I did find a pair of size 40 pants the other day in a garage sale for three bucks. Rainbow, Rainbow suspenders. suspenders. At the core of my being, I have felt that life is a dance. That my life is a dance. I'm a dancer. I dance. Knowing this has given me a great sense of pride. The world says, you are a spastic quadriplegic. I say, I'm a dancer. There is a new movement happening in the world. People are beginning to realize they're more than what they've been told they are. The flame is fanned and the fire spreads. Every moment is a new moment to do what's never been done before. Every day, I approach the corner of First and Main. <laughs> A very busy street. Traffic whizzes by, oblivious to me or anyone else wishing to cross. So I wait poised, ready to make my 50-yard dash to the sanctuary of the other side. But recently, I've begun exploring being gallant in traffic. <laughs> I insinuate myself into the fray. When the cars see me, 
and come to a screeching halt and impatiently insist that I cross, I wave my arm graciously, nod my head ever so slightly, and say, Nay, nay, goest thou first, kind gentle auto driver. November 1988. Neil, the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation is interested in your show. They think storm reading is a great vehicle to tell the world about your condition. And they've purchased an ad in your playbill. It reads, Playwright Neil Marcus suffers from dystonia, a rare neurological disorder in which powerful involuntary muscle spasms twist and jerk the body into unusual postures. The playwright is afflicted with generalized dystonia, dystonia muscularum deformans, the most severe and painful form of this disorder. It denies his ability to speak, stand, walk, and or control sudden and sometimes bizarre movements. Um, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I think I can say whatever they want. If they think they can say whatever they want. Think again. For too long, I did. <laughs> I did many many For too long, I've been under the medical microscope. <laughs> I've been called twisted, paralyzed, tortured, afflicted, horribly disabled, disfigured, unintelligible, oh, and confined to a wheelchair. <laughs> No. Nobody ever asked what I thought. Nobody ever asked what I thought. So? Now now it's time to tell the world my story in my words. I am Neil. I have flourishing dystonia. 
a neurological condition which allows me to leap and soar and twist and turn constantly in public. <laughs> Thus challenging stereotypes of every sort and making me very interesting to watch and sit next to during the lunch hour. <laughs> it rides me like a roller coaster at times. Not much is known about dystonia. Touch, understanding, and attention can be very helpful. Fear and dread are not helpful. I have generalized dystonia, which means it's all over me like a phone line that links world nations. <laughs> it makes me very alive. But then again, aren't we all? Perhaps dystonia is, in a way, a universal condition, something we can all identify with. We must all become more conscious, more humorous, more insightful, more creative. We must fill our lives with grace and empathy. <laughs> into a room full of people, and there's a disabled person in that room, and she scares you, or he makes you want to avoid him, or she mystifies you. When this happens, you are on the cutting edge of liberation. It is the experience of being different. It is the experience of seeing life from another point of view. It may be a contemplative or introspective experience. It definitely causes one to think. <laughs> People are curious about us. They wonder where we come from, from what realm we live in, where we're going and where we've been. Everybody wants to know what it's like. See a disabled person clearly, and chances are you'll see yourself clearly. When this happens, there are no limits. And there are no limits to when this will happen. It will probably happen now. Good night.